with Valentine's Day around the corner, I want to show you a wonderful dish that you can share with your loving partner that is simple, fantastic, and delicious. What I make for my wife on Valentine's Day, and she loves me that little bit more every year. So sit down and relax, I'm gonna show you this wonderful multi-step process of making a delicious ribeye steak. Toss me a Heineken using the key and hooking the top. The liquor entice, all of the rice you cook in a pot, yeah. And this the life, if you ever in the mood for maybe a few drinks. And some bomb ass, bomb ass. Ooh. We making bomb ass food. Just one shot won't do. Not tonight, cause if I'm not hungover, then you know it isn't right. Alrighty, so today we're gonna prepare a beautiful Valentine's Day dish that you can make with your spouse. We got a big old ribeye. We got this from my butcher. It's a tomahawk. We cut the bone off just cause, I don't know, the bone is a little obnoxious. But this is a pretty big cut. I would say probably two inches thick. Wonderful meal for two. Now I'm gonna show you how I make my ribeye. Tomahawk, whatever you wanna call this cut. But it is primarily a rib. So I like to season the bottom of my cutting board first when it comes to this. And we're gonna need a lot of salt. Now do not be afraid, oh, I got high blood pressure. This is a very thick cut of meat. Like I said, it's two inches. So we wanna make sure that we get enough salt that can penetrate the thickness of that steak. Like look at that, it's that thick, it's huge. So I like to put a little bit of salt down on the cutting board, some fresh black pepper. There we go, a couple turns. And then I'll take the actual cut and I'll lay it right on top of there. Now while that's going on, I'll season the top. That way I know every inch of the steak will be seasoned. Again, it looks like a lot of salt, trust me. This is a very thick cut. Then we're gonna add our pepper here. There we go, a couple turns. And then I'll grab it and I'll kind of massage it into the salt that we laid down. Now just because we season the top and the bottom, Look at this, that's unseasoned and it's thick. So make sure that you roll it into that seasoning. Get every inch. Also what I did is I pulled the steak out probably an hour prior to cooking it. It's been in the fridge all night, it's thick. If you don't pull it out and let it get to room temperature, you're gonna get uneven cooking throughout the whole thing. You wanna make sure that it comes to room temp it's gonna make the cooking and the Maillard on the steak, which is the browning of the steak, more even, and it's gonna yield a tastier, crunchier crust. So, pay attention to that. All these things matter. This is for your, this is for your baby girl, your baby boy, your spouse, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. So you wanna, you wanna do it with love, because the way you feel and the way you act comes through through your cooking. If you're all pissed off and having a bad day, the food's gonna taste like it, because you're not paying attention to it. All right, now that we got this going on, we're gonna get a skillet big enough for this monster, heat it up. So we're gonna let the salt just kind of give it a second to penetrate, and we're gonna get some nice oil going in just a moment. Boom. All righty, so we browned the bottom. I'm gonna grab like a uh, dry tea towel. Don't grab anything hot with a damp tea towel because it'll steam and you will get burned. I'm gonna grab her by the bone here. There we go. We're gonna flip her over. Again, away from me. We got beautiful browning. Nice Maillard reaction, it's crispy. We're gonna let that go for another five kind of minutes. What I've been doing, just to help the surface area kind of pull out more, I've been grabbing a baking sheet and I've just been pushing it down, kind of giving it some weight kind of really maximizing that surface area for a much better brown crust. And when we get a nice even color on here, again, another five-ish, six-ish minutes, we'll come back and show what we're gonna do next. All right, so the steak is browning quite nicely at this point. Just to give it a little more depth, we're gonna add a few tablespoons of butter and a little rosemary sage, and we're gonna butter paste. So it's a little bit harder in this pan, but you just wanna go quick, baste the whole thing in butter. What that's gonna do is gonna add a layer of richness to help cut through the silky and rich steak. So just butter based, butter, butter, butter. Keep that shit going. I think the browning is good. 
you gotta finish this guy in the oven because he is thick. Now normally I enjoy my steak at a medium rare temperature, but because this steak is a kind of a thick boy, I'm gonna go for more of a medium, medium to medium rare, but more towards the medium end. So we're gonna grab this guy, grab our bacon sheet, slide it right on there. And this is gonna go in a preset oven at 375 with a temperature probe. The probe is gonna go into the fat, the thickest part of our steak here. I'm gonna shove it right into there. And I'm gonna probably pull her out at what a normal medium rare temperature would be. I'm gonna pull it out at like 130, and then it's gonna rest. I'm gonna leave the sage on there because I like the aromatics that are coming from that. Sage and rosemary, excuse me. And he's gonna go into here anywhere from, I don't know, 20 minutes possibly. Again, it depends what the internal temperature is going to be. I'm using a meter temp uh, probe. I suggest buying one of these. There's an app that goes onto your phone, not a sponsor. I just really like the products. Excuse me. And this is going to really gauge how well the steak is going to come through. So we'll come back to you when that is ready to go. All right, so now that the steak is still kind of cooking, it gives us some time to make a nice compound butter. So what we took here is some butter that we actually made, which is fantastic. And compound butter essentially is just taking all of your favorite herbs and spices, some nice aromatics that I think go well with steak. We're gonna chop it up and just kind of mix it together with this kind of softened butter. So just grab all your herbs, give it a nice kind of finer chop than you normally would. Something like that. Nice and quick. Watch your fingers. Go over it again just to get it kind of finer. And then one more time. Again, we want a nice mince. That's perfect. Now gather up all your spices, put it in your butter, and we're gonna give that a quick mix with like a fork. What we're gonna do is just kind of emulsify all that stuff together, right? Push it down, mix it together. And we're gonna put this back in the fridge to kind of firm up, just to get it like one cohesive thing. All right. I'm gonna use my hand because it's taking too long. Just kind of knead it together. Just like that. Get some plastic wrap. Perfect. Put that in there. Roll her up. Get a nice shape going. It's gonna go back in the fridge, maybe 20 minutes. Ideally overnight, but 20 minutes will work. For us, we want this to kind of melt over the steak, so if it's a little bit softer than usual, it's just gonna melt faster, which is fantastic. But this is also good for bread, for any kind of like uh, chicken, just adds a little extra flavor to that butter. So we're gonna put this in the fridge for a little bit. Alrighty, so now our steak, has an internal temperature of 130. That's normal, medium, rare, after rested. We're gonna pull this out now. Show you what that looks like. Oh God, it's beautiful. Here we go. Lovely steak. We're gonna let this, get my tongs. We're gonna let this bad boy chill out on a wire rack at least 15 minutes. What resting is doing is taking all of those juices and kind of letting them settle in the steak. And you'll see that that'll create a more even color within the meat. If you were to just cut into this like an impatient animal, all the juices run out and then people think it's blood on their plate, which is not, it's just the jus of the steak, which is just sauce, juice, whatever you want to call it but you just have to let this rest. So all of that stays internally and you'll find the stick is more moist, it's less dry, the flavor's better, and it's more of an even coloring around everything. But other than that, we got an absolutely fantastic crust. I mean, you don't get better than that. So we're just gonna let them chill out and then we'll, uh, we'll cut into it. We'll be back. Alrighty, the steak has rested. I think we are good to go. What we want to do, this is really nice for presentation. We can bring it out on a platter, but 
obviously it's inedible, so we gotta get rid of it. So I like to hold it up here and just follow the bone. Pretty cut and dry. Just wash your fingers, bring her down, and she's out. Now we're gonna flip her back over, and you always wanna cut against the grain. So what we have here is we have the rib cap, that's probably the most tender part, the main, and then this is still kind of the tail, all obviously delicious, but there's different levels of tenderness going around, which is why I love a good ribeye steak. So we're gonna cut down this way. Just nice and easy slices. There's one. And you can see that we got a wonderful color, which I do think that medium is definitely the way to go when it comes to these kind of cuts of steak. It's perfectly pink. It's not too under. It's well rested. This is what I think you should go with. Now that we're getting closer towards the tail, I like to kind of just snip this guy off. He's not going to waste. We're going to continue to slice him in and just go for it. Nice, lovely color all the way through. Not overcooked, not undercooked. And it's not dry either, which is fantastic. We got a beautiful crust. We're gonna move the bone, I guess over here for now. And we're gonna cut the tail off, just, you know, little slices. Boom, 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 boom. Throw that on there. We're not finished just yet though. We have our nice compound butter. It was beautifully rested. Kept its shape because we wrapped it up. Cut a couple slices off of that. We're just gonna plate her on. As this goes on, the butter will melt into the steak. And I think this is a wonderful dinner for a uh, Valentine's meal for two. There's enough steak for even three people. Obviously you can do some sides. We didn't do sides today. I think fingerling potatoes would go wonderful with this. Maybe some sauteed broccoli rabe with a nice garlic kick, or some, I don't know, cauliflower rice even, whatever you want. Anyway, we're gonna enjoy this. It's fantastic. It's salty, not too over salted. It's rich, it's fatty, it's tender, it's well cooked. What's not to, what's not to love? Anyway, share this with your partner. You know, have a wonderful Valentine's Day night. You might even get a little lucky making a meal like this. But anyway, if you liked the video, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know how it turned out for you. Let me know what your favorite steak cut is. And uh, have a beer on me. I'll see you soon.